your dial. You are tuned in to the Mark Order Podcast. Join the Mark Order. Hello and thank you so much for joining us. It's Wednesday night. You know what that means. The Mark Order Podcast at it once again. Happy National Joe Day. Joe, 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 Joe. National Joe Day. And we have hey. not just any Joe, we have Asian Joe. We've got Ryan in the house. We've got myself. We're going to talk some AEW Dynamite. We're going to talk all things all elite, really. It's what we do on Wednesdays. But fellas... How we doing? A Cardinals fan? Joe, really? I thought you knew this. Go Pack Go. That makes sense for where you live. Mm-hmm. Um, despite you having a terrible towel, which is the right call. Uh, it's baseball season tomorrow, though. I'm excited. I'm going to go hang out with Shining Wizards Matt. Very pumped for that. I don't think I knew that you were a Cards fan. Mm. Why is it Cards? Uh, the Royals were too close. So growing up, the Royals were always kind of, you know, just shoved down our throats of you must be a Royals fan if you live within two hours of them. Fair. Okay. Okay. So, um, and I have friends who live in St. Louis, so I go to a lot more Cardinals games than anything else. That makes sense. So nice uh, stadium. Yeah. Yeah. New we're Bush. Special. Much better than it... New Bush. Oh, I always say that. <laughs> Many people do. <laughs> Um, also the Cardinals significantly better than the Royals in most of our lifetimes, I feel like, right? I mean, we don't talk about last year, but yeah. No, yeah, we don't need to, we don't need to get into that for a lot of reasons. I, as a Yankee fan, don't really want to talk about last year at all, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, I know Ryan is probably okay talking some baseball Mm. as we swing in to baseball season which makes me very happy ryan how are you buddy and it's gone i'm oh, sorry um i'm good phillies postponed their opening day one day because it's supposed to rain tomorrow yeah it got postponed uh, you know what it's too <laughs> early for this <laughs> it's never Tim too McFall. early for this Tim McFall and chat doesn't have a team Uh oh oh no we can pick you one in our baseball team randomizer that I just made up. Yeah, it's just going to be the Phillies. No. And it, also, you don't get to default just because you have a hat on. Joe has a hat on. I have Yankee Stadium behind me. Hello. Oh, he's from Montreal. He's from Montreal. Well, you can't be a Jays fan. Because that yeah, feels Expert, like... Expert fan from back in the oh, day. Yeah. Never forget. You hang on guess... to that. Yeah, you would technically be a, a Rays fan. <laughs> So that's what where they moved. Remember, they were they were like, we're gonna try try half the season in one city and half the season in the other, and everyone was like, you're out of your fucking mind if you're trying to do that. But uh, we are gonna talk a little bit, and then we'll dive into some dynamite. But thank you, Tim and Scott, and everybody in the chat. I'll try to do better about remembering up front to ask people to leave a thumbs up on our videos here. Uh, and to also subscribe to the Mark Order podcast if you haven't already. Um, we would very much, very much appreciate those things. And to leave a five-star review. Oh, that's right. The Nationals are the Expos. That's why my head was trying to say, I must have had Italy. it wrong. No, no, no. Nationals are the, yep, that is that is correct. That is correct. I'm excited for baseball season. Uh, I, for the past three years, maybe four years, have gone to... Shining Wizards mats. Um, and they have a ridiculous spread. If you follow the Shining Wizards on social media or you follow Matt on social media, you will see how ridiculous the setup is. LSG was there last year. He's got like eight different televisions set up. We have a really good time. So I he loves extremely baseball. Extremely excited. Baseball's the best. Mets are rained out. They start on Friday. I know that's okay with me. I'm a Yankee fan, but even though Matt is Mets opening day. Yeah, he just loves opening day. There's different games on every television. We have an excellent time. But 
Uh, I'm a baseball gal, so I'm a I'm a happy camper tomorrow. And yet you're not a Creed fan. No, though that's the greatest song in the history of baseball. I mean, but I'm saying the Marlins beat the Yankees in the World Series. Let's not forget. So I have some animosity towards the Marlins, but I do respect. Look, if you are a band and you change the lyrics about a song that was about the birth of your kid to be about just generic baseball things. That's a good, that's a good time. That's a good time. You have to respect it a little bit. Let's play ball as game day. We want strikeouts, base hits, double plays. If that's not poetry, I don't know what the fuck is. Okay. People watch wrestling and are like, this is cinema. I, this is, I don't even know what this is. This is a high level of art that I don't think we've even wrapped our heads around, but we Joe, are you like a do it for wrestling? I'm not going to lie. As much of a Creed hater as I am, one, I would love it for my Creed loving friends, namely Jeremy, Cher Delaware, and Ben Dutino. But I, just for the cheese of it all, because wrestling is inherently cheesy, like I, I would be down with a one time Creed performance. Now, I don't want them to do a theme, I don't want them to do like an opening song, like. Uh, the same way I didn't want Nickelback to do Saturday Night's All Right Fighting. So, but like a one time, but it has to be like the Super Bowl halftime was. It has to have like the weird acro dancers and stuff. Like it needs to be all the fuck out if you're going to do it the right way with Creed. Like it can't be just them playing a song. It needs to be, it needs to be spectacle. It needs to be spectacle. Agreed. I, I, I will, I will, I will agree with your point there. Michael, damn it. Like, I'll make plenty of Creed slander, but I am not an unreasonable woman. I can leave room. Well, I'm definitely an unreasonable woman, but not on this. Like, I can leave room for this specific thing. Um, Joe, do you have taste or are you a Creed fan? I have taste. I Scott Staff was in Omaha last this past Thursday. And you and didn't go. I did not go because. Sure. I have taste. And plus, we were hosting the first and second round of the NCAA basketball tournament down here. So, Hell yeah. did you go to that? In the mess. No, I did not. Oh, okay. It just would have been terrible downtown. Yeah. Between Creed and basketball. Lord. It would have felt like Joe had created his own prison by going down there. Did you know that song off the top of your head? I know Creed. I know Creed. I don't understand. You know, you know Creed? Name every Creed song. <laughs> No, I couldn't do that. But do, if you, do you have a think... top five, though. Oh yeah, probably. Okay, give me your top five. One. Uh, I'll be very it, impressed by my, this because Ryan's not even a music guy. My own prison. Okay. Um. I actually I debate. I mean, you kind of have to put arms wide open higher on there just because they are like those bangers that get you. We don't wide open. It's the fifth that's tough. Under um, the sunlight. Hold on, it's fr- it's not from Human Clay. It's from their other one. Um, and I'm blanking on the name of the song, which is the problem. I don't want to look it up. So I'm, I'm. What is the name of that song? It's it's from their first album with with, with all that other stuff. We used to play it in the bar. Torn. <laughs> is it torn? Is it torn? No, it, it's not Natalie and Julia, but like Creed's torn. That that's oh, 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 I got it. 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 What's this life for? Okay, respectable. So the five. first album was better than the second one, I will say. 100%. I mean, we will. So, listener, sometime listener of the show, but friend of the show, Greg and I would go to a local bar and you could. You went to a bar with Greg? It had the Listen best ones ever. I went for, for, oh, so I went for cheap, amazing wings. This was a, a hole in the wall. Was this was ever like, a hole in the wall. I was going to say, because Greg could can drink. I know Greg. And you don't drink. So the disparity no. of how much he can't drink versus how much you don't drink is a pretty wide gap if this was like back in the day day. <laughs> this was this was for uh, food purposes. And he went there for the same reason. Okay. Respect. This was a hole in the wall, rundown bar. But. You could put on songs for free. So we would just 
torture people by putting on, you know, they, I think they eventually got rid of it. And we might've been the reason torture uh, we people? put on just Creed all night. Well, I mean, we enjoyed it, but you know, next thing you know, you'd start to hear in the opening to one and people would be like, what the hell? I asked for a top five and we've only gotten three. I, three. I give you five. I didn't. Yes, I did. One, my own prison, higher, arms wide open. Uh, what's this life for? Five. I didn't hear higher. Okay. I, I, will, the I will admit. I meant through the bangers, but. What if has a really good riff on that? They've got some you know good what? Take, They've got some take good out riff. hot. Take out um, with oh, arms wide open and put in oh, what if. Yeah. I'm switching those two. Good call. Respect. What if? What if? What if? Was that the one if, on the song? Like one of the strings contracts? Oh, mm -hmm. was it? They have one song there on one of the Scream two or three soundtracks. I remember which one. Didn't the Scream soundtrack also have that? Uh, was it Puddle of Mud? The maybe I'm the one. Maybe I'm the one who is the schizophrenic psycho. I'll say Creed is better than Puddle of Mud ever was. I'll give the credit for that. Puddle of I only Mud remember one Puddle of Mud song. Them and Theory of a Dead Man are worse. For yeah, sure. Big G says it's Scream 3. Oh, it's there bad. you go. Here's my top five creed. Ready? Marlins will soar. Marlins will soar. At number three, I'm going to go with Marlins will soar. At four, I'm going to have to say Marlins will soar. And rounding out the top five, you guessed it. Marlins will soar. That song is unbelievable. The crack of the bat sound effect that is a fucking MIDI file. It's unbelievable. <laughs> I hope they play it live on opening day. I really do. Joe, do you have a, a Creed fop, top five, or once again, do you have taste? Daphne, what are you doing, uh, girl? Most of my Creed music that I appreciated was back in the day was off the my own my first album. Okay, fair. It was my a better prison, album. Yeah, that was sure. the first album. Um, yeah, you lost me with Human Clay. That album I, I got it. No one reacted to the fact that I knew the name of the album. That is kind of surprising. That is kind of surprising. They had a song I called owned the album. They had a song called In America, and they'd be like, it was like In America, and then it would just be like ting on the hi hat, just the most pathetic little like excuse for like ting. Oh my gosh, I had good times making fun of those songs. Should we just do a Creed podcast? We probably get some some views for at least one episode. We probably would. We probably we'll do a deep dive into like a couple songs at a time. Mm -hmm. It's true. We could do a retrospective. Maybe we'll do we'll watch one behind the music. One song per episode. It'll be the way that we go. Good call. We could it. do behind the music. They did. We could watch their behind the music episode. Do they have pop a video? I'm pop, sure they pop, did, pop, but pop, I remember pop, the behind the music yeah. more. Of course you do. <laughs> well, Creed is on a heater, and so is AEW, but how we doing, fellas? How you doing, Joe? We're headed into opening day. We have the NCAAs going on. Mm -hmm. You're avoiding the downtown. Well, not now. They, they've moved on. Sure. But how's um, the rest of your week been? Good. I mean, it's I, I won $2 in Mega Millions yesterday. Let's go! Yeah. I know Love the winning ticket. The winning ticket was sold in New Jersey, so someone's in New Jersey has a lot of money. No, it's not me. Not, not it's you not guys. Okay. I wouldn't be here. <laughs> I, I mean, would. I'm here for the would, game. So no, no, no. I'd eventually be back because I would be doing this for the fun of it, as I am now. But tonight, I would be. I wouldn't say celebrating because I don't. I don't think I'd be able to physically contain myself. Mm. Other than that, it's uh yeah, like you mentioned, it's National Joe Day, so everyone. Is there anything points. that we should be doing to observe? Um, you know, just not acknowledge, but more like recognize and appreciate. That's all. Appreciate you no. and Joes around the world. Oh yeah. no! All the Joes you know. All the Joes the you know. The only way is Joe. Do you think that's why Samoa Joe retained his title was so that he would still be champion for Samoa for Joe Day, basically? Yeah, obviously. That makes sense. Uh, it is National Joe Day. And then on National Joe Day, the rankings return tonight. So, you know. I Ryan, know. We'll have Ryan to maybe see if. There's Ryan no rap tonight. 
Well, no. Because I won't have seen them. That's, that's fair. upsetting. You do it on the fly anyway. No, I wrote them. And I got <laughs> trashed for it. You got so defensive. No, I you, wrote them. You, you could look at the rankings and then you sing them in some Creed-like song. It's true. It would fall somewhere in lines of Creed, Alter Bridge, and like Days of the New. Just do that gravelly, gravelly voice. It's very easy to do a Scott Staff impression. Are they out? <laughs> I mean, I was singing Joe of Joe to the song, theme of one, but no one was paying attention to me. Well, I hate when my my name's in a song. Joe. Oh, Joe. No, don't say oh, Joe. The only way is Joe. It's National Joe Day. Let's please observe and not insult him. Or Joe, uh, Joe, 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 Joe. Better. You all good over there? No. Why do you think I'm good? I mean, well, like just as a as a common phrase, I know you're not you're not like good. Thank you. How's your week, Kate? Thank you for asking, Joe. Nice to know I somebody. I was going to ask whether she came at me about me. I'm doing good. I had a good little week. Good things are going all right. Had a fun day today. Get my health back on track. Getting ready for Philly for Mania week. Get ready for Supercard, but most importantly, getting ready for Nigel's Magic Show. I'm so excited. Does he have? I'm so excited for Nigel's Magic does Show. Does he have audience participation? I think so. In which case, my hand will be the first up. I'm so excited. So, I'm genuinely gotta... more excited for this Magic Show than like pretty much anything else the entire weekend, including Supercard of Honor, which is going to be great, and WrestleMania will be great. But I'm so ready for Nigel's magic show. I love magic and I love Nigel. It's not fair that a guy like Good Nigel, who's, who's a great wrestler, great commentary, funny person, can do magic. Like, it, it's not fair for the rest of the other guys who are just like, you took all the talents. I know. He, Meanwhile, we have Ryan who's everything. doing Creed karaoke. I know. Yes. If I could replace another guy who Nigel has all McGinnis. the talent. Another guy with all the talent. Trust me, if I could replace myself with Nigel McGuinness, I would. Um, I'm going to tweet at Nigel McGuinness right now and see if he okay. wants to replace Ryan. I want to point out. If he responds, Joe, I'll fall down. Little little insight into my friendship with, with Kate. She was nice enough to say, hey, you live by. Why don't you come to the magic show with me? Her level of wanting me to join <laughs> changed significantly when she found out I actually enjoyed magic. Well, I did, because I didn't want you to just go along with it. Like, oh, Nigel doing a magic show. That'll be fun. Like, of course, have fun and participate. But if you were like, no, I'm actually into magic, I think it's going to be so much fun. Like, she got very happy that I'm, because I do enjoy magic. I won't lie. Okay. I enjoy magic. I'm so excited. Guys... I'm more excited I... for that than anything. What if I get to meet Nigel? We could be so excited. I've got a custom well, shirt will... that I'm going to unveil. I'm very excited about this. <laughs> I, I, I have hope a save the clam so shirt it. in the stylings of an old Nigel shirt, but I won't tell you which one. How about that? Nigel gets all the talent, and then you have Ryan is one of the greatest quotes on here. That is true. Also, in the chat early tonight. Hi, Jesse Ozog. And hi, oh, Jesse guess... Ozog, dad, who's also named is Joe. There you go. It's National Joe Day. Josie Ozog. Jose Ozog. Josie. <laughs> Joey. Also, hi to Dave from the Pro Wrestling Podcast, who we adore. I can't make a heart. You can't, you can't do, do any else. hand things. Well, this, that's this is why, why Nigel is better. <laughs> this is why I can't make a heart. I have to stick with a theme. <sighs> Brutal. Well, we're going to get into some AEW. We're going to, uh, we don't have collision to talk about, which is kind of a bummer, but we do have Dynasty coming up around the corner. It was also kind of a quiet news week this week. There's not a ton going on, um, which is a little bit refreshing, to be honest. I will take it. Uh, but of note, the departing Santana from AEW did do an interview with Chris Van Vliet that you can check out. Seems like he's in a positive mindset and that it was a, a pretty healthy decision for him to depart the company. Um, so we do absolutely adore that. And 
uh, best for him in the future. He talked a lot about his sobriety and things going on um, with the past couple years for him and the challenges that he was facing with his injury and leaving and coming back into those environments. So um, some good stuff there from Santana. Also of note, uh, as reported by FIFA Select a while ago, but confirmed by AEW, they have a new COO, not CEO. That's filled by Mercedes, but they have Kosha Irby, uh, who is now in a C-level position there, which sounds like is going to be a very positive development as they're trying to kind of realign things internally. Um, good stuff to have people that are experienced and know what they're doing in this space in high-level positions, but... Uh, that announcement officially confirmed uh, he is replacing uh, Raphael Morris, who took a job at the Barclays Center. So um, some good things going on there. Uh, he was brought in in late February, but just kind of recently confirmed. But other than that, not a ton going on in AEW world on the news side. But sometimes quiet is good when you are bringing in Okada and Will Ospreay and Mercedes and all of these things. Um, so we will take it. But any thoughts on either of those pieces of news, fellas? I don't know if you got to listen to the Santana interview, but sounds like a, a positive move for everybody to move on from that. And uh, we don't really have any any connection to anybody in a C-level position other than Mercedes, but just always feels like a positive thing when um, chess moves are made like that. I mean, I, I didn't see it. Uh, I read about it because I just didn't see it. Uh, it sucks that they never got the title that they were supposed to because that's what, from what I see, most fans wanted. They were definitely one of the most popular teams in AEW. But like you said, um, sometimes you just you got to move on. You're, you're whatever for whatever reason the place you're at is not where you want to be or not where you need to be. No harm, no foul. I mean, that's that's life. That's why I'm glad there's not only AEW, WWE, but a thriving indie and TNA, but there's also a thriving indies business. Like, that's the best thing. These guys can just say, this isn't for me, but I can still make a living. Agreed. And I think when you look at the time that he was out for, so much changed in AEW. So, so, so much. So sometimes something that might have been a fit initially when you come back with a new perspective he's obviously in sobriety and the company has changed so much might just be some mismatches there it sounds like but best to him as he moves on and Ryan you're right I think everybody's kind of in agreement that um it does feel like them not winning the titles was one of the bigger swing and misses in the earlier days of AEW they absolutely should they were super over completely different flavor than everything else uh in the tag division was proud and powerful but Joe, any thoughts on on either piece of news there? Well, Ryan, since Ryan touched on the Santana part, I'll just say that, you know, it's I like the fact that AEW continues to try to refine their operations. Um, I, I feel like they, they took a lot of heat on that early on. Yes. I felt like, you know, it was Tony and maybe a couple other people trying to, to start this business and run the business. So him continuing to kind of bring pieces in here to help um, help the company after what it, is it five years now? Yeah. Um, I think that's, you know, a good growth move. And uh, just looking at kind of the resume and the background of of what this new COO brings with him, um, I think he has a lot of good experience that can, you know, help further the product. Do you think he has a cool theme like the CEO? Do you think he's like, CEO? You know, oh, every, CEO, speaking of, every time I hear the CEO, the CEO, CEO theme, I just think of Imperium, though. Cause it's, it's that same. That beginning is definitely yeah, Gunther just, sounding. <laughs> <laughs> it's that back it's the back track and then they have no so i want to see imperium come out to this that theme now i want to see gunther do the like the dance i amazing. think gunther should do the dance i'll say it's not like my favorite it's not a theme like i would just put on to listen to uh but it is a wildly effective wrestling theme like i think sometimes banger themes and good songs like are separate things and i think this is a banger theme but not necessarily like my favorite song um but like when she comes out to it, it's it's so perfect. The whole crowd just immediately, immediately jumps on it, which is pretty cool. But some more people in the chat just want to say hi to one LT Colonel Photo. We appreciate your service and Kylie for hopping in. 
I always say that wrestling is for everyone and fight pulse for everyone. That includes the Mark Order podcast too. So hang out. I'll chill to be safe here. Don't forget about Lord Kev. Oh, and Lord Kev. I thought I shouted him out earlier. My bad. You, if you did, I didn't hear it. We love Lord Kev. Always support him. And you have a, you have a tendency Kev. to pass over people. Joe, do you have any thoughts on Mercedes theme? No, I think it it it, it, it highlights you no know, the CEO. It doesn't have to be a, a huge banger, but like sure. you know who it is when she comes out. Well, that covers everyone's thoughts on the theme. So we'll go to commercial break real quick here. We're gonna hit commercial, and when we come back, it's a mystery. Okay, we don't know if Ryan is gonna have a rankings rep or not. We don't know if he's They're not out yet, so no. Or, oh, damn it. I, I have well, been looking. Every eight weeks or so, we get rankings. So we'll have to wait another two months for that to be the case. But we are going to take a moment to tell you about some of the other great shows on the Shining Wizards Network. I don't think they'll give you a Creed rundown like we do here for the first 15 minutes of the show. You're going to have to come here to get that excellent information. But there are plenty of other great shows on the Shining Wizards Networks, one that covers music, some that cover horror movies in 30 minutes or less, which is very cool. Um, and of course, our flagship show, The Shining Wizards Podcast. But you can get more details on those in our little commercial break. Turn up the volume, God damn it! Hold on, I'm going to start this again. My, my computer freaked out. <sighs> the amateur hour. The yeah, Eminem amateur. Very much it's so. Supposed to be the A show of the network, Ryan. To continue to support us outside of listening, we've got a few ways for you to do that. What is it doing? What is it doing? <clears throat> we throw now. Not Hold on. Before, before she said this. <laughs> Our commercial. No, that's not it. <laughs> Each and every one of you for tuning in throw every Monday course. night. What is it doing? To the Shining Wizards. If you'd like to continue to is Tony's voice off or is that just me? I can't hear anything. You're off. You guys can't, you can't hear it? I can hear him, him talking a little bit, yes. I mean, I'm literally off. doing nothing special this time besides hitting play. Support us outside of listening. We've got a now few ways for you to do that. If you Does shop at Amazon, weird? go over to Amazon.ShiningWizards.com. Do your shopping as usual. And when you make your purchase, a little bit of that right, purchase price purchase. will go back to support the show. If you like to wear t-shirts, Merch.ShiningWizards.com will take you to our Pro Wrestling Tea store, where we've got over a dozen great designs from over 11 years of professional wrestling podcasting. You can become a Patreon supporter at Patreon.com slash Wizards Podcast, where each and every week we call out your name as one of our show producers. And the more you support us, the more things that you're entitled to receive and believe me they are fantastic if you can't support us monetarily if you don't shop at amazon that's absolutely fine continue to listen to us wherever you listen to us on the world wide web and make sure you like rate review subscribe do all that good stuff it doesn't cost you anything helps us out and we can continue to bring you the love fest that is the shining wizards What's up, folks? It's your boy, the Impact Player, Mr. Philly Ray, inviting all of you to check out the Turnbuckle Throwbacks Wrestling Podcast. Join us as we cover all things current in the world of pro wrestling, as well as paying homage to the old school, the squared circle. So listen in to find out why we are the recognized symbol of excellence in sports entertainment broadcasting. Find us on all social media platforms and anywhere you get your podcast from. And as always, we are the proudest members of the Shining Wizards Network and Rant Entertainment Media. Are you tired of being lied to every day by the mainstream media? Do you want to know what's really going on in the world? Do you want to make up your own mind about things and not be told what to think or say? Then listen to Inconclusive Breakdown, a weekly anti-PC look at the world of entertainment and current events brought to you without censorship or filters. You can find us everywhere you listen to podcasts, BitChute, and on ShiningWizardsNetwork.com. And also, we're a proud member of the Shining Wizards Network. Got 30 minutes to kill? Come check out 30 Screams or Less, where we review a horror movie in 30 minutes or less. We cover new movies and old ones, too. We'll give our honest thoughts on the movie, good or shit, as well as a rating of each one that we watch. New episodes weekly, available on the Shining Wizards Network and wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. I'm Steve. And I'm Corey. Come check us out at 30 Screams or Less.
G'day guys, my name is Thomas, one half of the Brocast podcast. With our podcast, we go back and watch wrestling events from WWE, WWF, WCW, ECW, AEW, and many other wrestling promotions. You can check us out on Twitter at the Brocast, that's T H E B R O K A S T, and you can also download all episodes on Apple Podcast, Castbox, Castro, and many other podcast apps. you like your music heavy, then check out Radioactive Metal on the Shining Wizards Network. For over 16 years now, Radioactive Metal has been one of the longest running podcasts. Over the years, we've interviewed some legendary metal acts, had some awesome discussions, and cranked a hell of a lot of tunes. So join your cool Uncle Snowy and his co-host Aaron... For the audio mosh pit that is radioactive metal here on the Shining Wizards Network. Well, the action is underway. What's up, everyone? When on the Shining Wizards Network, be sure to check out Wrestling Night in Canada. If we're not recording another kick-ass podcast, or playing in punk bands, or recording kick-ass heavy metal albums, then we're sitting back, we're grabbing a couple brews, and going over everything to do in the world of pro wrestling. Because we're from Winnipeg, you idiots. The Mark Order Podcast is the only show you need if you're looking for dedicated coverage of everything AEW on the Shining Wizards Network. Join us live on YouTube every Wednesday night at 10.15 p.m. Eastern after Dynamite to chat along with the show. If you can't join us live, listen to us on your favorite podcast platform. Follow us on all social channels at MarkOrderPod and use the hashtag JoinTheMarkOrder because if you don't find us, we will find you. I'm Kevin Rowe. I'm Al Day. And we're a couple of down-under pounders that co-host... Dots, an action figure collecting podcast where we talk about, well, just about anything that tickles our fancy at any given moment. We're a grumpy old man, and sometimes people get on our nerves, and when you get on our nerves, guess what? You get off the lawn. Get off my lawn, asshole! We also go on a little bit of a mission. We go back and we're grading every wrestling figure line that's out there. I'm talking LJMs. I'm talking Jacks. I'm talking Hasbros. Who doesn't like a little Hulk of Plex? It's a Gorilla Brain Wrestling Podcast production found on the Shining Wizards Network. I'm Duke Bags. Kevin Rowe! And together we are the co-hosts of your Duke and Road. If you want to hear about some terrible wrestling shows, we got you covered. Well, we talk about good ones, too. We're currently talking about the death of Dungeons and Dungeons. I know what we're fucking talking about. Sometimes we get uh, guest spots, like from the Taskmaster. I like to uh, I like to listen to the Year of Duke and Rope podcast. They're uh, funny guys. That uh, I like when they I like when they talk about the the, the Nards plows. I like Nards plows. That's uh, that's a good move. And uh, I like the Dungeon of Doom. You know, sometimes sometimes I, I call my butt the Dungeon of Doom. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Oklahoma. Let me tell you a little bit about my favorite wrestling podcast. All right. A podcast for two men. Two men, Duke Banks, Kevin Rowe. They talk about professional wrestling. It's a man's sport. Alright, and who better to talk about a man's sport than Duke Banks? Oklahoma. And once in a while, Vince Russo is talking about it. Bro, you piece of shit! If you're not listening to your Duke and Rowe podcast in the back with the boys, you piece of shit, I don't know what you're doing. It's, uh, you got a slight one in there? If you're a man, if you're a man, you're talking about something only a man can do. You're talking about a slight one in there. Bro, take the time to slide one in there. All right, bro, you piece of shit. Slide one in there. A Gorilla Brain Wrestling podcast production that you can find on the Shining Wizards Network. 
I just wanted to welcome Jesse Ozog specifically back. So the chat is saying it too, and I need your confirmation. No one heard Tony speaking like he was on helium. No, that was a you problem, buddy. That's why I stopped it twice. Whatever was coming through my ear made him sound like, hi, this is Tony from the Shining Wizards. And I'm like, Brian, what we need is less more excuses. Allowance? Well, I need more allowance always. Um, less excuses, more professionalism. Because no, no. when I think of the people in the chat, the Mike Petersons, the Tim McFowles, the Scott Georges, and my God, the Jesse Ozogs of the world, Greg Cherry just joined. I want to deliver them a top of the line class act, extremely professional and normal podcast. That is basically my signature on every podcast I do is professionalism. Even Mike Peterson. Wow. Even Mike Peterson. Girl, despite, you tomorrow being, despite tomorrow being baseball season and him being a Red Sox fan, I do my best for the people. Okay. And I feel like we all should. And I know Joe does. It's National Joe Day, for God's mm -hmm. sake. So, Ryan, get it together. But let's talk I some think, dynamite. Yeah. I'm going you know to segue into talking about what the people can do for us, but, you know. Oh, what the people can do for us? Yeah. You mean, like, mean for... su support us by leaving a thumbs up on this video, subscribing, or perhaps, I don't know, putting your money where your mouth is, buying a Mark Order t-shirt. I got very aggressive about that, and I'm sorry. But if you did want to support us by buying a Mark Order t-shirt, there are four designs to choose from. You can go over to ProWrestlingTees.com, search for the Mark Order podcast, and you can get one of our four lovely designs. Two of them are double-sided. You've got the logo. You've got the font variation. I'm a big fan of the pocket one. I'm a pocket square gal. I appreciate that. And I like that that one's double-sided as well. So feel free to pick one up as you are going through your merch orders. You want to grab something. You want to support us in the process. We would be very, very thankful for that. Or buy all four of them. Buy all four. Spring is coming up. Summer's around the corner. You're going to be going through T-shirts. You're going to be like, oh, my Mark Order T-shirt is dirty. I wish I had three more to get me through the week. Well, buddy, you can buy all four designs. You'll look great. How many days in the week do you think there are, Kate? You're going to like it. The way well, at some point you do laundry and then you could start over. Okay. I don't want to say they have to wear them every day of the week. But at least four days a week, majority to the week, you should be wearing more quarter t-shirts, okay? What else you photo I'm with the idea that you think there's four days in the week. <laughs> no, that's that would be a Mattism. No, he thought the week started on Monday. Sincerely. Yes. So. But when LT Photo wears his every Wednesday, you guys should too. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. But Joe, thank you for that lovely segue. It's nice to see that somebody has their head on a swivel around here, okay? Because Ryan is clearly mm -hmm. off the rails. His background is just fading all weird. Can't pull up audio. It's French Canada. We're going to talk about our show from France, Canada, and the lack of crowd that there was today. Uh, that is, I sound like a native speaker, but we open with a banger between Osprey and Shibata. We knew this card was loaded going into it. This was a very fun way to start it off. I didn't know if this was going to be what they start with. I like that they did. A lot of people, um, I guess because I've been following New Japan, like I've known Osprey's entrance and how fun it is and how interactive it is and how it has the um, almost like Queen had with We Will Rock You where it's like so much call and response with the crowd. Osprey's entrance has like this invitation to join in. It's a very fun way to start off the show, but I just saw a lot of people making note of it tonight and it is worth noting, but. This was a super, super fun match for somebody like me. <laughs> I love the ending of this. The whole ending sequence was pretty nuts. You had Will with a huge cutter for a near fall. You have Shibata with a huge clothesline for a near fall. You had them colliding in the center with lariats. Uh, you have Osprey trying to run, but Shibata grabbing him and dropping him. A suplex from Osprey with a back fist cover. Still no. Finally puts him away with the underhook tiger driver combo there. Uh, 
Shibata seated in position for the Hidden Blade. Really, really fun stuff. Also, I love the Flag Octopus. I think it's an awesome looking move, but I popped huge for Taz saying Octopus Jones over here. And I also love a good penalty kick. And the reason I love it is because it looks like the goal is just to kick somebody's head off. But Shane Haste had to correct me and said, then why do you kick people in the chest? And I just want to say, I'm out here shilling for TMDK on a daily basis. And I don't appreciate that Shane takes every opportunity to make me look like an idiot. Okay? Because it's now the second time that I have been wrong. I don't need help looking like an idiot out here on the streets. But I love a good penalty kick. Even if it is kicking someone in the chest. It looks like you're trying to take someone's head off. Shibata has a really, really good one. Underrated move. I like that it it does almost the same thing that the Hidden Blade does, where it's just like a bunch of momentum and you're done. Like, I, I love moves like that. They're simple, they're clean, they're violent looking. Uh, so I loved a lot of what we got in this opening match. Uh, people were criticizing Osprey not selling against Takeshita. We got a little bit more selling here. Got a lot of no selling from Shibata. <laughs> it was no selling some chops in there, but I like that. I'm... A purist to an extent, but that kind of stuff doesn't usually bother me. Thought this was a super fun way to open the show. I don't know what we do with Shibata from here. He had been in the ROH pure title picture for a while. I don't know what roster he is appropriately set on, but let's start with Joe because I like to skip over Ryan. And so this is a good way to start doing that. Uh, but Joe... What were your thoughts on our opening match here? I mentioned a lot of spots, but you are free to call whatever spots you want. You have been blessed to go forth and call spots. Well, thank you. That's a very nice way of you to gift me that on Joe yeah. Day. I was going to say, it's National Joe Day. Free pass for the whole show. Um, no, I mean, right away, I appreciate the fact that they showed the history of the last time they had a match seven years yes. ago in New Japan. I thought that time helped lay the foundation of, of the story that they were about to tell. Um, and as far as you know, a match, it, it really made sense. As far as you know, Shabbat's had now has had you know back to back weeks of banger matches with Danielson and now Osprey. Um, really, probably the best he's looked in his in his AEW time of sure. these last two weeks. I mean, you talked about what they do with him next, but like I feel like they need to do something with him now that he has some momentum and people remember how good he is. I think the logical thing for him to do would be to go back after Wheeler, but Wheeler is injured. Right. Uh, and to your point, this is the best Shibata has looked. Now, Danielson and Osprey are probably the two guys in the world that are going to make you look better than anyone's ever looked. But this is certainly the best he's looked since, I mean, I would say post his brain bleed, just like in general. Mm -hmm. um, but I love one LT photo saying in the chat that like Shibata is just so badass with his mannerisms. There's something about like those old school New Japan guys, I feel like, that have that steel like ice in their veins demeanor about them. Minoru Suzuki Ishii definitely has that. I love that too. But he also has like this calmness within him that I love so much. And you hear it in the theme, like he's just he's just there. His whole like character is that he's just the wrestler. Really shows up a lot in the way that he tells stories in the ring, but uh, I definitely covered everybody's points of view. I don't need to ask anybody else. Well, I have one um, spot. Oh, please. Uh, the one spot that it was a totally normal spot that I think any of us on here could do was Osprey's. What was it? Okay, it was knock down, kip up, jump into a high round kick. I uh, did that this morning. Right. I mean, just, yeah. You know, you take you take Daisy for a walk. You do some yoga, and then you do the. Exactly. Up and round kick. Exactly. That's uh, my daily routine. So no, that, that was an insane display of athleticism. Yeah. yeah <laughs> it's a, a reminder of what he can do, but that's really the only spot other than what you've laid out. So I'll throw it back to you, Kate. Thank you so much. Uh, if anybody in the chat has anything that they would like to say about this match. Uh, oh my God, Ryan! Totally forgot! Joe doesn't know Anything you want to say? He called your dog Daisy. And yet he's your favorite? That hurts. I'm, look, it's National Sorry, Joe Daphne. Day. 
It's, de- it's National Joe Day. I'm not going to correct That hurts I'm me not- in my core. I'm not going to correct him on National it's, Joe Day. It's springtime. So, I have flowers on the mind, you know? Just- that's it. <laughs> okay, you're fine now. Joe um, is probably sending me daisies because he's such a gem. And if they don't arrive, it's because the mail sucks. Exactly. Got it. Did you want to say anything uh, about this man? <laughs> well, I guess... Uh, did anyone else actually believe for a second that Shibata might actually be hurt when his head bounced off the mat? Um, uh, his head bounced off the mat, I think he might. Well, no, there was the flying yeah. forearm by Osprey, and Shibata came up holding his head, the back of his head. So they went into replay, and you literally see the back of his head smack him. Like with him, is he's the only wrestler where I'm like, D- did that really get him? Like, that, yeah. Brain bleed is a as a scary thing to come back from for sure, and because that is like so innocuous that it would be the thing that did it like of course your head legitimately slamming uh the only thing i really want to say is i obviously great match i'm not going to sit here and tell you say it wasn't the funny thing to me was it was not the story i thought they were going to tell based on them describing their history before the match their history before the match as told by i guess excalibur was they met seven years ago. Osprey barely, you know, he was a stick back then. He barely weighed anything. He was this young up and comer, you know, flyweight, junior heavyweight, barely weighed 100 ki- uh, kilograms. Isn't that what they said or something like that? Um, kilograms. I, that's what. That's what they said. Uh, <laughs> but my point being, I thought Osprey was going to do a lot more power moves. I thought you were going to see now that he's actually got real size to him. The way Osprey won this match was going to be like Shibata came out expecting Osprey seven years ago and was getting a much bigger, more defined Osprey. Didn't really get that. It was still a lot of high flying, a lot of and, and listen. I'm not. It ended up being an amazing match because they're two amazing wrestlers. It was just fun. Like I thought they were. I'm more pointing this out that I thought they were setting something else up and they went a totally different direction and it still worked wonderfully. So I like, think you're. You're right in that they had kind of set up because Osprey was one of those pandemic guys that was like, here's an extra 20 pounds of muscle on me now. And he was such a high flyer. You were like, how is this guy going to adapt his style? He can do it all now, which is bananas. Um, but but that's a very fair thing. Like the It did kind of call for a different match than we got. It feels more like the fight came in like those lariats and the chops and stuff like that. But the other piece of that to Ryan's point, like Shibata was no selling a lot of that stuff because he's yeah. fucking Shibata. So it's also just like if he is going to be impervious to the fight that's brought, like that is kind of undercuts things a little bit. So that's that's a very fair thing. That's a very fair thing to say that it was a great match that was disconnected from the tissue of the story makes sense. I guess Guys, the rankings are out. It's good that we let you chime in. The rankings are out. I'm going to let, this is, this has never happened in all of the live order, Mark Order episodes. We have not had a hot off the press rankings situation. So I'm going to let Ryan steer the boat on that one. It wasn't that long ago we pressured him to doing Sting makeup. It felt like it backfired a little bit. I don't want to peer pressure you into stuff. But if you want to attempt the rankings. Go go we'll- to the next match and let me see what I can do. Okay. Okay, we will do that. Well, before we get to the next match, we actually have a couple of backstage segments, including this Brian Danielson video package that kind of just covers his rise to being the greatest wrestler in the world. No big deal. Um, It is, as we're coming into April, starting to hit me like, these are the final months of Brian Danielson's full-time career. And uh, that's just crazy like the greatest wrestler of probably all time definitely the 21st century um that's not that's just an absolutely wild thing uh i feel like it's been very good and not taken for granted and it's just man i hate birdie i just hate his daughter and i feel like he should stay full time for another 10 years but a nice video package here if anybody wants to chime in feel free to Going once, twice. It was just a video package. Then we get backstage with the beautiful, wonderful, remarkable Renee Paquette. 
who was backstage with the Young Bucks, and Nicholas all smiles until Renee brings up the tournament and them losing initially uh, the last tag tournament, the inaugural tag tournament with Private Party. Nicholas is very upset by this, but Matthew calms him down, says that they came back with their goals and their objectives, which popped me tremendously. Uh, the first was to put Sting out of action, and the other was to restructure the Elite and bring in Okada, which they did, and they point out that he's now the Continental Champion, and he won fair and square just like they are going to do, which I thought was a very fun thing for evil EVPs to say, uh, but... Their biggest goal is to get those tag titles back. And they side off with the sleaziest thing of Matthew telling Renee to smile more, which is all sorts of gross, fun stuff. And then we have Okada also getting out of a Lambo. Guy is a star, man. He looks like a star. Everything he's been given, he's knocked out of the park. It makes me so happy that Okada is here. Very sad for the New Japan product, but I'm having a lot of fun with what he's walked into and his execution of it. I'll throw it to Joe first because I feel as though Ryan might be preoccupied with some rap ranking. I do have a thoughts, but his thoughts. Okay. Respect. After Respect to, to my foul you... thing in the chat. Okada is so cool. He is. He is. Uh, Joe, what do you think of this? Well, maybe we just bump the rap until towards the end of the show to keep people invested throughout that show tonight. You know, like, that's such a letdown event. That's a main off. event, main event yeah. rankings. I respect that idea. Um, no, I think you hit on everything. Like you said, like the most, the most heelish thing they did, I thought to me was to tell Renee to smile more. Ugh, so gross. Because you know, um, you, I was surprised you didn't mention the, the attire. I know you, you thought that. Uh, which one looked like it was actually Nicholas. I thought it was Matthew, but Nicholas w looked like a uh, tall Hot thing mustard. of mustard. Mm -hmm. And then when we get into the match, they are a gender reveal. They mm -hmm. are in pink and blue uh, in like suit wrestling gear, mm -hmm. which is incredible to me. When but... you saw mustard, I saw the man in the yellow hat minus Curious George. Very nice. Okay. So... Respect that. I felt like it was a little more golden, mm -hmm. but. Uh, but not bad, but not, not, not a, not a bad comp. I'll and, take it. You know, to, to go off of what you've mentioned about Okada, uh, the character work he's been doing has been so fun and great and complimentary to the EVP stuff, uh, from, you know, coming into, you know, being the, living the Ferrari gimmick to, you know, his, his mannerisms later tonight, watching their match, uh, on the you know, backstage to kind of giving his, his seal of approval and, it was, he's been great. His facial expressions are unbelievable. What blows me away about that is I, I didn't have the like, how's he going to do on Western TV concerns that everybody else did because he's an accomplished enough performer that I think he gets it. Uh, but more that he spent the this last chunk of his time in New Japan was spent as a very effective heel, but most of his career was spent as this extremely lovable baby face and very easy to cheer for always been very charismatic but this is like a specific type of heel that demands a lot of really good timing and to your point facial expressions and it's a mix of dastardly overtones but with like this comedic underbelly to it and that's that's a lot for anybody to nail never mind somebody that's coming over from a different ecosystem entirely that's a live events one um so i'd i'd I'm loving this Okada stuff, man. I'm I'm glad you're digging it too. Um, Ryan, you're grinning like an idiot over there. I'm assuming it's about the rankings rap, but is there anything that you want to add about this segment? I once again need to express to everyone that my grinning does not indicate quality. It indicates how much I'm popping myself and how ridiculous I'm being. But two. It's the key to wrestling podcast. So. And I apologize if this was said because I am a little distracted. Nick's cheesy smile. Just makes me so happy. Wait, can we and all do Nick just... Jackson smiles right now? Thank you. I want a screen grab. And then it just later. goes away. Yeah, it's just the good cop, bad cop stuff is funny enough as is, and then the all the put onness of the like all the fakeness of the good cop stuff is even better. It's even better. So it's I'm with you there, Ryan. I'm I'm digging all of this. This has been such a blast and that brings us to 
our EVPs versus private party match, which was a good match. Um, the EVP trigger was a little clunky toward the end, but we do have a 630 splash that Quen lands basically on his forehead that made me very nervous. Um, <laughs> Nick slipping on the EVP trigger has to hit the knee after Matt. So there's just a little bit of wonkiness in the ending, but they get the W in this. There was a German suplex on the outside of the ring, and I um, I haven't gotten this confirmed yet, but I, I have heard that the outside of the ring is the hardest part of the ring. So to do a suplex here is a lot. Um, but this was a very fun match. There was also an a Acai Moonsault in here. I think it was Quinn that made me really nervous on the landing because it was to the outside and he did okay, but it looked like one of those ones where it was like, oh man, half a centimeter in the other direction and that guy broke his ankle on it. But seems like he is okay. Fun match. I'm a little nervous that I, I really hope we're headed to top flight in them because I don't know if I want to see FTR and the Bucks as like the reset for the tag division. It feels like we've gotten so much domination from both of those teams, but this match was fun. Hoping that we get top flight in the finals here, but Joe, we'll throw it to you because Ryan's still cooking on these ranking wraps. What did you think of our match? I thought it was fun. I think private party and, and the Bucks have relatively good chemistry together i think um i think there's a lot that we can glean from private party as far as uh maybe a lot of similarities of to the bucks when they first started uh I, and calling spots since you you bestowed that right upon me of course uh, go in peace to love and call spots <laughs> and to you um the the silly string on the outside i thought that was a, a fun a different a different way of doing that uh, move followed by that Falcon arrow by Nicholas on, on Quinn to the floor. Yes. Uh, that, you know, just things we don't see all the time uh, off the, at the guard, off the guardrail there. Um, and then at the end, really, I, I appreciate the fact that it showed that private parties kind of are willing to do what the bucks will do as far as to, you know, try to get a win where the bucks will pick you in the game bag and then, no private party comes back and tries to win with a belt shot to the head. Uh, huge, huge pop for for the yam bag reference. I respect it. I respect it a great deal. So yeah, I, I like the fact that they're not, you know, just the uh gee golly, you know, we're gonna take this shot and lose. They wanna win and they wanna advance. So I agree. I and it's nice to see private party back to just feeling important again. This tag tournament was a little bit of a letdown for me, to be honest. Like, I'm glad that we got the matches we did, but I was hoping this was going to be like a full reset. and We'd be seeing like Butcher and Blade and maybe Dark Order or whatever, but it does kind of feel everything's pretty expected except for the upset angle that's running with the infantry. But Ryan, our rap rankings god, uh... What are your thoughts on this match and also kind of where the tournament's going overall? Do you think we're getting Bucks FTR three or do you think we're going to see top flight in the finals of this? Oh my God, is that private party? I was, you got me. You got me because I was also going to follow up and say when they came out, were you like, oh my God, is that private party? I legitimately had Every that clip noted in my head for you, but. You you knew you picked up what I was putting down before I even had to put it down. Respect. You said it. Um, this made private party feel important again. Like they had a real match. They put through. They could have won. Like the way the character trajectory is going with the the EVPs. Had they lost, wouldn't them losing wouldn't have shocked me, because it could. There is there is a story there. Now they didn't. So clearly, but. Private Party put up enough of a match that I was starting to buy into the EVPs losing. Uh, the spot yeah, up on the guardrail with uh, Cassidy, just amazing. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> Did you guys talk about it? No, 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 no. I was just doing the Private Party. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I just, I don't even. Um, so I love that. There w I, I don't know what it says. I don't know where private party goes from here, uh, but to I do club. think this is a night. What'd you say, Joe? To the club. Well, yeah, but after that, 
uh, I guess it's the after party, and I guess after the party, it's the hotel lobby. But after that, I don't know where they go. My guess is, that, but I think this is a reset. It makes them feel important again. For your thing on the tournament, I, I don't know if we get FTR bucks. I will say this. If FTR ends up winning it all, not having Moxley and Claudio in there actually might work out really well. Because, yeah, stop shaking your head. Because they can instantly Quiet step boy. in as they can instantly step in as number one contenders and say, "We beat you." The only reason we couldn't be in this tournament and beat you again is because we weren't here. And the you have a number one contenders match lined up. Loser of the tournament goes on, or the loser of your pay per view match goes on to win a tournament is fucking stupid booking in my book. I disagree. Meltzer said the same thing that you did, and I so disagree with it. I just think it's very dumb that, like, there are I, times. And I, I also don't think that's what's happening. Um, it, I think this is going to be end up being completely nonsensical because I don't think that that is what's next. But I, it just makes absolutely no sense. Um, I, I think I'm thinking sports in this where there are times when the better team for one reason or another isn't in where they should be to win it all, the team that they are clearly better or, or have beat ends up winning it. And then you have that conversation of like, well, wait a minute. Sounds but this like team is better. Yeah. But why would you take losers and put them in a tournament and not winners and put them in a tournament? Because everyone who's not in, everyone in that tournament had been recent losers because that's just the way the tag tournament tag teams have been. Name one team that's been like besides Claudio and Mox consistently winning. Well, the if you, you have, have no a, one, right? If you have a big pay per view match and a team goes well, the Bucks over, Bucks just lost their big pay per view match. If you have a big pay per view match and the losers are in it and the winners are not, that makes no sense. The Bucks are evil EVPs. They were going to politic their way into that, whether they wanted to or not. But the winners can the, the winners of the pay per view match are clearly somewhere else and can come and say, "We couldn't be in the tournament." There is a logistical. Why explanation. are the winners of the? I don't have a problem with the losers being in it because they're one of the most established tag teams in the world and one of the greatest tag teams of all time. Your winners also being too busy. For a tag tournament to crown the champions makes no fucking sense to me. I know the real life reasons, but it makes no sense in kayfabe that, hey, we were important enough to have this really important match on pay-per-view, but we're, we don't value well, the tag titles enough is, to be in the tournament makes no fucking sense. Then what you sense. do is you don't, you then what you do is you have the EVPs win the belt and Claudio Mox can come in and say, why is it that you two had us booked elsewhere? They're not booking, though. Well, now, so the, I mean, that is an on screen explanation that they, they've used their EVP power and got Mox and, and Claudio not in the tournament. There's like an on screen explanation right there. I guess. I think it's, it's shitty booking. Seen, it doesn't bother me at all. It bothers me a lot. It bothers me that the, Winner of a major pay per view match would not even be at a tournament to win vacant tag belts, but the losers would. That just makes no sense to me. I understand the real life stuff that Mox is working in Japan and that there's all this stuff at Arena Mexico or whatever. Winners of a massive match not being at a tournament and losers being in it is weird. The NCAAs are not structured to be like, hey, you guys sucked. You're in this tournament, but you guys who should be a top well, I mean 10 seeds. There, there's winners of conference though. tournaments who end up not not getting anywhere where teams that they may have beat end up going farther in the run. Happens all in, the time. In the tournament. I My honest hope is that top flight is the one that comes out of the winners. I think it's the most interesting thing. I think it's another pair of brothers. I think the Jacksons can just try and make their lives a living hell as new tag champs. Like, that is my absolute... I I think to reset the division and upset would be a really good call. I think it would be a really good call to have top flight win. They can face the evil EVPs. They can face FTR in some fresh matchups. They can face Bullet Club. Um, or I'm sorry, I always do that. Black Full Combat Club. I keep calling them Bullet Club. I don't know. 
it's a big mess. And I, I was hoping it would do things like get some new teams in the mix and make Dark Order feel important and make Butcher and Blade feel important and all these things. And to me, it doesn't feel like we've done that. But we'll move along to Jericho and Hook. Renee congratulating uh, Hook on his win and Jericho saying that after being in the ring with him, Hook exceeded all expectations. He gets a pinfall on Jericho, biggest win of his career. Um, and that he wants to tell Hook that after 33 years, if Hook wants any advice, he'd be happy to give it to him. He's never managed or had a school before, but he's there if Hook needs him, basically. Um, and Jericho says he knows who he is, and Hook says he knows who he is, but Jericho says he also knows who he can be. I want to vomit so much every time i see face chris jericho and wise old dad chris jericho makes me want to vomit most of all i absolutely fucking hate this i think it's a terrible use of jericho he cannot be a face it doesn't work i've seen it time and time again fail i don't want hook getting caught up in all this nonsense woof to where this is going ryan we'll start with you we'll let you recover on the yeah, rankings well. That's What'd a bad say? call. That's a bad call to start with me. I am deep in rankings, but uh, I hate this. Okay, see, now that wasn't so bad because you just agreed with me. No, I mean, you, for once, you're right. Um, Jericho shouldn't. Oh, this just it. Doesn't, it, it doesn't fit either character. Jericho's not pulling this off well, and Hook doesn't need this because, if nothing else, ignoring. All other things. Hook's dad is in the company, and Hook's dad is a legendary wrestler. What else? So photo saying his dad is fucking Taz. <laughs> yeah, that, that's exactly my point. Like, if if Taz wasn't in the company, if he was just not, then you could at least try this storyline. But he he's sitting at the commentary desk. He's right there. He's giving so us thoughts this, on this, this very segment. The only way, and I this is I hate this. It's not even going to be work. The only way they have a chance of, I don't think salvaging it. Uh, maybe having the fire eventually go out on this dumpster fire is Jericho is totally just manipulating it. And he takes out Hulk. I don't love it. It sucks. But at this point, what else are you going to do? Besides just totally abandoning it. I think you could go in the direction of Hook doesn't want Jericho's advice and Jericho gets really fucking offended by that. Um which is kind of a fun play and a reversal on the like kids don't ever ask the old guys for wisdom anymore. Like making them the asshole is, is kind of a fun direction to go. But Joe, I hate this. Ryan hates this. Do you also hate this? I do hate this. Hey, unanimous agreement and that Jericho said. This segment probably could have been a digital segment they posted on YouTube or their you know, Twitter or something. It's the only part of this that I believed was the fact that Hook at least acknowledged the fact that he didn't trust Jericho and knew who he was. And my only hope is that Hook jumps Jericho before Jericho does Jericho things. Let's hope that he jumps Jericho before Jericho does Jericho things. I agree with you wholeheartedly on our cold-hearted, handsome devil, Hook. But Ryan, Joe. CEO, 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 CEO. She joins us on commentary for our women's match, which was a fun one and on at the nine o'clock spot. Would have preferred two women's matches, but I will say a good rotation of talent, the same amount of women getting used here because this had a multi women match, right? Um, and Mercedes being on commentary, this getting 10 minutes, this being at the nine o'clock slot. Still steps in the right direction, right? Absolutely, we'll take it. But this was a fun one. We get a waist lock from Chris Statlander and Anna J sending her to the apron and a nice high kick to Chris. Anna J looking really good recently. Uh, but Will comes back in, locks the hips, and we've got the power bomb for the one, two, three. Absolutely adored this. Uh, some good spots in here. Everybody got a chance to show out. Nothing 
super crazy or outstanding, but like really good showings, really solid work from everybody involved. Everything made sense. I loved Willow grabbing Sky for the Death Valley driver on the apron. That looked really nice. Sky had a great code blue in this as well. So great to see Sky continuing to get those reps. And then post match, we have Julia Hart attacking Willow from behind, holding her title up, looking at Mercedes. Loved everything about this. Um, Julia's presence, the attack on Willow. Looks like we're headed to Julia Hart and Willow at Dynasty. I'm excited about that. Um, I think maybe it's Willow's time. I think it's it's been a successful run for Julia. I think it's been very establishing. But uh, we'll start with Joe. What did you think of our gals match? Or were you getting chicken tenders at this time? No, I got mine ahead of time. I See, was prepared. Smart man. Smart man. Uh, no, I thought it was a good four-way match. Uh, I thought it was well-booked and well-produced. Uh, everyone you know, had their shine moments. Uh, Anna Jake looked really good, uh, even though we kind of knew that she'd probably be the one taking the pin out of the three, out of the four. But she looked really solid in the match. And uh, to your point about the Death Valley driver on the hardest part of the ring, um, I love the, the 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 production of showing Monet's reaction to like, oh my god, and then going to Stokely and his eyes are like, he's just like, yes, like. This is exactly what I want. I want this vicious side. Uh, I just thought the juxtaposition of of the facial res- responses were great. Um, otherwise, no, yeah, like you said, Willow uh, is Willow's time to I think to beat Julia, and I think that sets up the Monet rematch. And you know, uh, I think can Monet keep kind of teasing that Willow match and unfinished business with her. So I think that's what we have down the line. I will say though, at the very end, when Julia comes out. I have no idea how she got there because the lights didn't go out. I know. I'm I like, didn't even think. I think that's illegal. She appeared out of nowhere, but the lights didn't go out. It's so bizarre. Um, I didn't know that was allowed with House of Black. But when else photo saying Mercedes versus Willow at Double or Nothing? If that is the case, I don't know what else is planned for Double or Nothing. That feels like your first women's main event to me of all time. Like you have Mercedes, huge attraction. Made event at WrestleMania as the first black woman to do so with Bianca. You have Willow, first main event of ROH. Um, that feels like main event worthy to me. I think if you want to back up this insinuation that Mercedes is here to change the women's division, a lot of people said they already did that with Soraya and it wasn't backed up, right? This is how you back it up. Um, but who knows? We've got a lot of wrestling to get to before we get to double or nothing okada has a title joe might drop his title we'll see what happens but right i i liked this women's match i liked mercedes on commentary doing a good job putting everyone over to at one point um they had kind of thrown to her and said like do you have a preference on who to face and she was like well i like that sky blue is laid out right now because that's easy work like I, I liked her kind of going through everyone and putting everybody over, but also saying, like, I'm here to beat all of these bitches. Let's go. <laughs> it was good work from her. She also looks amazing. Like, every time she enters, not just her outfit, but, like, her whole presence, it just feels like a big deal. She just feels like a big deal, which is great for the product, great for the division. Your thoughts on our, our women's match tonight? So, I think we all have a fear when we look for them to back it up that they drop and they drop 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 it like it's hot so they need to not do that and continue forward um save, save the rapping for the rankings my song it's not a rap my song is done okay good to know uh i will call upon it at the right time i am not practicing it this is gonna be off the cuff hopefully i can keep the melody i guarantee i won't that being said awesome match Loved every bit of it. I thought everyone had a, a second to shine, which I always love. I think Anna looked good when she needed it because I think she's had a little rough go lately. And I think this was great for her. Uh, Mercedes face when Willow did the death Valley driver on the apron was great. Like to see a wrestler react is always fun. Uh, it makes, makes things feel more real that the like, even a wrestler is like, Holy crap. Why did you do that type deal? Um, <laughs> The I, I Joe beat me to my point, which was that Julia didn't have the lights go out, and that was really sad. Every was single word cannot express 
Love it, Happy sadness. Ryan. I'm going to show you what it's all about, but uh, otherwise, amazing. I, I, I don't have a lot of individual spots to point out because, again, laugh. whenever I watch matches like this, it becomes just a kind of. Uh, who just Joe? I think you're the one who just posted in our chat, and uh, I'm gonna, it's going to be a letdown. <laughs> but it's close. It's close, but it's a letdown. Um, wait, what song did the Marlins War Sword do? What was that theme? Was that too? Let's play ball. It's game day. I don't remember the name of the original song, but I just remember it was about his kids. Um, so whenever there's a cluster, like a match like this, the moves just kind of blend together in my head. I do remember Willow trucking over Sky Blue, which yes. is always fun. When she does that spot exceptionally well. The whole thing seems great, and there's like four stories set up, and I love it. You have Julia and Willow, Julia and Mercedes, Mercedes and Willow, Stat and Will uh, Mercedes, Stat and Willow. Like, there's so many interconnected stories, and they all make sense, and they're related, but they're not related. I love it so much. This is they're really doing a good job of telling this story. This is one of the better told stories going on right now. Agreed. I love it. Stokely so valuable in the managerial role, man. Like his facial expressions, the way he participates in matches, the way he chooses not to participate in matches, always very, very good. And uh, he's been a very good pivot point in this. Like I'm, it's refreshing to see kind of um, the way he has consequences as a manager uh, because it's different than what we've gotten from Stokely a lot. And it's different than I think what we traditionally get with managers a lot. Like, it's not um, so talk heavy and it's not so interference heavy. It's, it's Nana's kind of doing the same thing. And I, I like that a lot. So um, I like when managers support and aren't necessarily like pulling attention. It's, it's a nice, healthy balance, especially when there's so many women involved here. Right. So good stuff there. Women's division continuing to thrive. Love to see that. But we move on to a setup for the Butcher versus Dustin in Canada, which should be fun. Butcher from the Buffalo area. Um, Dustin and his Finn Balor face paint. That was a very odd one, but what are you going to do? He's got half the demon on. Uh, but that should be a fun match. And Butcher also kind of calling back to the Bunkhouse Brawl match, which I appreciated. So some good stuff there. If you guys want to chime in, feel free to. But this was basically just setting this up. The butcher had one great line for me when when Dustin says, you know, gave the whole like, oh, your breath smells or you smell. And he says, it's my mustache. It has its own musk. It was. Yes. Thank you for recalling. Great that. line great. from the butcher. Pretty great. I miss your scent. I miss your musk. <laughs> Ryan, any additional thoughts or. Uh, Joe, Joel said the, Joe said the best part. He certainly did. Well guys keep sticking with us please leave a thumbs up on this video if you haven't so far i know we've had different people popping in and out of the chat so thank you so much for supporting us tonight we've got two more matches and in between those matches we're gonna have ryan at his ranking song for you but before we get to that we've got trent Beretta and orange cassidy versus matt david and mike bennett no surprise here who gets the w but a fun match I'm loving the aesthetic of the best friends right now. The color palette has changed and it's looking cool. Uh, but a fun, a fun match in this. We got Roddy Strong hopping onto the apron, but Chuck Taylor right there sees it. Strong hits him with a right, but OC suicide diving onto Strong. Very nice because that's who took the international title off him, right? There should be some continued animosity there. But in the ring, Mike has Trent and Chuck is on the apron. Pulling Taven down, and we get a jackknife pin from Trent Beretta for the one, two, three. Jackknife pins, underrated when they're done very well. Trent Beretta does them very well. This was a nice match. This was a fun tag match. No surprise who was going to win. You figure the ROH champions are probably gearing up for Supercard, and this isn't where they need to be. They already have gold to fit their stables storyline as well. So, Brian, I'm going to throw to you first now that your song responsibilities are locked up outside of the performance aspect of things but what did you think of this tag match i thought it was fun not great bad. match uh 
normally wouldn't like champs losing except they're ROH champs. So you can make the delineation that there's just different divisions, even though they don't really make that delineation. In my head, I can at least explain it away, and that works. Uh, I do like the new best friends aesthetic. My only issue is that Trent's gear uh, matched the Undisputed Kingdom's gear. I hate that. It should drive I know you crazy. do, so I wanted to call it out for, for you. <laughs> Huge pet peeve. Uh, and, and so that was a bit off. I love their shirt. Their new shirt is like, can the best friends do it? Uh, yeah. With the big one. Can the best friends do it? So I like that that's their storyline. Uh, it was a really good match. Orange Cassidy, was, there was a point early on where he was showing a level of aggression that he usually waits in a matches, and I just love it. It's like he's not messing around. He's pissed off. He doesn't like the Undisputed Kingdom. He wants to win. This matters to him. Again, I could I could write a, a whole thing about the evolution of, of Orange Cassidy and how his character has naturally slowly developed over time, and now he's Dick still comedic. History, bruh. Well, it is history. It's the history of Orange Cassidy That's and how he's naturally developed. But it's just great. Great match overall. Um, I, I'm i glad Trent got the pin of all. Like, I, I know it seems silly. It doesn't, shouldn't matter who does, but sometimes I think it does, and I think Trent... Uh, has a lot more proof <laughs> as a character, probably as a wrestler too, because in, in AEW hasn't had quite the success of Orange. Um, but character wise, definitely something more to prove. So I really like the pin. I like that he got the pin, and I hope they go. I honestly would hope they get to the finals. I hope it's, I hope FT, I would be okay with FTR not making it. Um, and it being the best friends and the EVPs. Or best friends in top flight. Okay I don't know the bracket. So. How about oh, that? Oh, I would love them winning. I would love them. That would be very fun. Hey, this put me back. And then they can free bird it when Chuck gets healthy. There you go. See? Don't hate that. Uh, Kyle O'Reilly's back in wrestling, and I'm so excited, and it makes me so happy. And I got to see him on the screen today, and I got to see him wrestle. Hey, hey Joe. Week. Hey, Joe. How'd you feel about that match? Oh, damn it. Sorry. I didn't want to jump in. I was going to have her keep going. It's National Joe Day, and I skipped right over Joe. So, no, if. I mean, this makes me so happy. <laughs> it's an accidental running bit. <laughs> it is an accidental really... running bit. I don't know why. I've done shows with three people before. I genuinely think me hosting from the bottom fucks me up like more than I give credit to. It's so weird to me. I'm so used to like being You're a top, top left. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. I'm a top. Like I can be, I can host from the bottom. I can be a power bottom and and work from down here. But Joe, are there any spots that you wanted to call out, or did Ryan just you know, lab I'll, on enough? That I'll just kind of build off of some of the things that Ryan was talking about as far as. <laughs> <laughs> the Let's move on, Queen by one LT photo. Uh, the I thought just from the, the the tone was set initially, just from the start of the match, or. I love how OC just kind of casually walks between the two guys and is like, no, it's okay. I'm going to walk over here and also just lays out Taven. <laughs> uh, I thought that really was a, a, a tone setter. And I don't know if it's because they've been wrestling uh, Undisputed Kingdom or or if it's the best friends they are changing. But like you said, like the gear, the aesthetic, the edge to them where it's, you know, orange is more aggressive, Trent's a little bit more aggressive. They win tonight off of uh you know from outside interference kind of you know so like i don't know i'm interested to see if it's more the direction of what, where best friends are going or if it's just the team that they're facing and they're pulling this out of them i think that's a good call i'm excited to kind of see that too that's a, a good point by you and i'm so glad that i brilliantly thought to throw to you um to give us your thoughts on this match because that was some good insight from joe on National Joe Day. <laughs> well, we will now move along. You know what it was? I was just so excited to talk about Kyle O'Reilly again. I love Kyle O'Reilly. I'm so glad he's back. Looking a little less sad and tired today. A little bit more rejuvenated now that he's got his first match under his belt. Back from injury. I'm the happiest girl in the world. I love Kyle. Uh, but he tells Renee that there's no feeling that compares to getting back in front of a live crowd. Talks about how great this roster is and that there's no such thing as an easy match in AEW. 
Uh, and Renee asks if Kyle still wants to do this alone. And he said, yes, he loves these guys. But last week he did it alone. And he'll do it alone again this week. So good stuff from Kyle O'Reilly. I'm just so fucking happy this guy's back. He makes just, I'm so glad. I'm so glad he gets to wrestle again. I'm so glad he's on my screen. I love KOR so much. Uh, I'll just throw it to both of you. You guys can jump in how you feel. What of you, both of you, I, I want to see, I'm interested to see Kyle O'Reilly week by week and how that his character and his mood and his confidence keeps building every week where he would kind of be, gee golly, I'm glad to be back. I don't know if I can hang anymore. Now it's like, well, I feel good. I got, I knocked off the rust. I got the first win. Now I'm ready for my next challenge. So I'm ready for him to like maybe hopefully grow into the overconfident prick. I want like maybe that trajectory where then he finds his way back to the kingdom or undisputed kingdom. So that's what I'm interested to see the progression of Kyle O'Reilly. I'm excited to see that too. He could definitely play overconfident prick and he can really pull on all of his cool guy experience because he was cool Kyle for a while. And um, he told us that bucket hats were cool. So there you bucket go. Hats. I need that. I need air guitar back. Air guitar K KOR was, it was a hell of a time. A hell of a time. Cool Kyle. Cool Kyle. Cool Kyle was the best. I loved Cool Kyle. Not I remember it wasn't cool for Kyle. everyone, but Cool Kyle was awesome. Uh, any thoughts on this? Pretty pretty standard stuff, but good stuff here. You know, I mean, you can't do much more yet. It's too early in his return. Uh, they are setting stuff up, obviously, with the Undisputed Kingdom. And Joe kind of points out a good good thing. Like, he'll see how he gets better and better. And maybe grows a little resentful towards the Undisputed Kingdom, trying to latch on to his success, which is, I think is what might be where you're going there. But if he just goes full cool Kyle, I'll be on board. I agree. And something I am on board for is our main event. But before we get to our main event... I thought Ryan had killed the rankings with his last performance. Okay. I'm not asking him to be Tony Storm. They can't all be performances. Oh, uh, but we had not gotten rankings in quite some time. But AEW was brave enough to put them back out. Ryan had no time to prepare. So we're grading on a curve. Hot off the press. No Yo, can you do me a favor and pull up the ranking so you guys still see what I'm trying to sing? Um, I well, don't want to do it because I I have my written out lyrics on my screen, so I don't want to have too many windows up. Uh, well, while Joe's doing that, we'll remind you guys to leave a thumbs up on this video and subscribe to the Mark Order podcast if you haven't already. Also remind you to leave a five-star review if you're listening in audio form. And if you're not listening in audio form, give us one of those kind reviews anyway. TK tweeted him, Joe. Uh, oh, I'm on it. Um, let's see here. Good old AJ. I will also mention that uh, I am not going to note who the champs are. We all know that, so that doesn't need to be included. And mainly because it didn't fit into my my song. Uh, I will run down the champs real quick, just, just for the recap sake of it. But Samoa Joe, your world champ. Adam Copeland, your new... TNT champion, Roddy Strong, your international champ, and your new continental champ in Kazuchika Okada. Tony Storm, your women's champ, Julia Hart, your TBS champ, your trios champs, for some reason, Max Caster, Anthony Bowens, and Daddy Ass, the claims, uh, and your vacant tag team title. So that is your championship uh, aspect of the rankings. They were not woven into this song, which, as, as previously noted, uh, Ryan had no time to prepare and no rehearsal. So this will probably be his Not magnum awful. opus. <laughs> la, 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 la. Red leather, yellow leather. I will let you know that the originator of the rankings rap, Matt Bowman, uh, this was a freestyle. He never, never prepared, I don't think. Should yeah, and if I was doing freestyle, I could repeat the same rap six times like you guys did, but I tried to change it up. Okay, I had a Ryan, fucking gift. I feel like but. we should make Ryan like a bigger screen. No, we're good with this. Are you guys ready? Mm-hmm. No. Well, I just heard the rankings today. Seems my night is going to change. I close my eyes. Begin to say that swerve is 
who Samoa Joe will face with Cassidy and Moxley under that swerve guy. Welcome number four, Will Ospreay. Hey, he's head of Daniel's son with arms wide open. With arms wide open. Well, I don't know if Thunder Rose is ready to be the number one. She has to be Mariah May. Take a breath and be right behind Willow stands in awe. Her, oh, damn it, I messed it up. See, I already off the beat. Willow stands in awe. Her at three gives me life with arms wide open. Yeah, it was going so well before that. Under up. Willow is Diana. Welcome to this place. Deep is number five, and we'll show you everything with arms wide open. Now everything has changed. I'll show you tag. I'll show you the best friends with arms wide open. With arms wide open. I chose a song to torture you guys. I'll show you EVPs. Oh yeah. Hey, with arms this. It's wide too open. fucking long. With arms. I did this on purpose. With open. <laughs> if I had just number three, it would be the BCC. I hope at four, it's Bill and Starks followed by FTR, that for the tree he owes. It'll be that bang, bang, gang, and they can greet the world followed by the elite with arms wide open. Under them is BCC. Welcome to this place, four is the you who Hey, with arms wide open, I'm ending with the house of black. I'll show you love. I'll show you everything with arms wide open. I uh, am so sorry to everybody who heard that, to our viewers in the chat. Those are like three minutes of your life. You're just never going to get back. And uh, I'd never wish to get copyright flagged more. Than... Yeah, no, let's let's just let's just uh, hope and pray that the copyright gods strike us down. Uh, but I, we can, I think, guarantee that we will not have ranking again for at least another three months after that. Right. I mean, it's fucking brutal. I just want to say. That when I was choosing songs, I'm like, if I make this long enough, Joe can't cut this. And I pulled it off. Uh, Joe is a master, and we can cut this into four different bits yeah. if we wanted to. Pedro, I, I think you might be a Ryan burner. I, that's, it's not. Thank you, I Ryan. You, that was beautiful. I think that Pedro is a, yeah. is a, is a Ryan burner, perhaps. Uh, I'll make sure we, we tag and get this to Tony so he sees what he's done. Thank you, Joe, for hey, just... don't don't make Rough Ryan come out. Look, I uh will save that for 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 another week, but rough, Joe, rough just, just just know in the future weeks a new version of Ryan, a new character will be emerging. Thank God, because this one was quite frankly brutal. And this wrong. character is a tough guy from the nineteen twenties. Don't met him on the street. <laughs> Spoilers, stop it, stop it, stop. Met him on the street. <sighs> Joe, please text Tony Khan and tell him to kill the rankings. For well, well I'll, I'll, I'll put the video up and then say, This is what you've done. Thank you. That, you know what? It speaks for itself. Mm -hmm. So you'll I'm show so him everything. So the tweets wide open. That on National Joe Day, this is what Ryan has for you. But I'm not Here's sorry no, about no, what to catch no, does. No, 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 no. I, get, I get to make a what? comment. What? Shut up. You guys harassed the hell out of me for the sting thing. I said, Ryan, embrace the goddamn bit. And I went all fucking in tonight. How dare you? How fucking dare you? I'm not saying you weren't committed. I am saying you might be need to be committed. There it is. There it is. I need to be sedated. 
2020, 2020, boy, I was to go. Cash versus Strickland in your main event was an absolute banger of a match. It was what I can only call the anti-ranking song uh, of a main event. Uh, absolute, absolute blast. This is one that as many spots as I love to call. I would tell you to just go back and watch it because from bell to bell, this was very, very fun with a not surprising result. But this ruled. You get Swerve with the half and half suplex. My second favorite suplex of any type of suplex. I What's your one. first? Uh, Dragon. Snapdragon suplex. Oh, God. That hurt my neck. Just it's watching. A good, it. It's a good one, right? Kenny has, like, the best one ever. Mm. I love a good Snapdragon suplex. Fisherman is probably number three. Northern Lights is probably number four. Traditional German is probably number five. Mm. But Swerve... Tries that for the half half and gets head butted. Um, and I'm sorry, my notes say that Swerve both head butted him. I, my notes say that he head butted himself, but he delivers a half and half and a head butt to Takeshita, who hits him with a jumping knee, pop up from Takeshita and a stomp. But Swerve with the swamp and the big pressure for the one, two, three here. This was super, super fun at the end. Um, I loved a couple of things about this. Swerve trying to do the flip on the top rope into the Hurricane Rana uh, didn't really work, but I loved the attempt of it. And the DDT that Swerve hit was fucking nuts on this. Um, I saw a couple of people tweeting this, and it was actually noted by our wonderful friend Doc Mueller, who said that the handshake as their lockup was kind of cool. And I agree with that. That was like a special thing that you don't really see a lot, but. The big pressure at the end from Swerve. Absolutely love this. Very fun match through and through. Go watch it. If there's any watch match on the show tonight to watch, this is it. I liked it even better than Shibata and Osprey. Uh, totally, totally worth the price of admission on this one. Uh, Ryan, we'll go to you first because I think the people need a palate cleanser from what you just did desperately. So let's remind them of, of something that you're really good at, which is talking about wrestling. What were your thoughts on this? I don't know why you keep taking shots at my heart like this. It hurts. Um, well, I'm taking shots at your voice and at your heart. I'm taking that at your like vocal style. I, I put my heart and soul in five minutes into that. Like, come on. Really, I was more taking a shot at Scott Stapp than anything or whoever wrote that Fair song. Enough. But <laughs> um, and I do want to comment that uh, Ophelia just noticed my French Canada background, and I, I think everyone should notice my French of Canada. Of course, Ontario. Um. This match was great. I liked this. I liked that it was kind of a match. Like everyone knew Osprey was gonna win. There was never. I don't think anyone. Not oh, Osprey. Swerve was gonna win. Sorry, I'm thinking earlier because it's a similar thing, where you you know who the guy you know the guy who's gonna win. You knew that Osprey was gonna win. You knew that Swerve's gonna win because of the story. The for the other guy, it's more proving something. For Shibata, it was proving that he's back at where he was, and for Takeshi, it's proving that he's at that main event level with the main event guys. And I think he did that. He 100% put on that match. It was awesome. Uh, there was some funny moments with Taz on commentary yeah. where he got really upset about the the pin because they said that they didn't wasn't a full pin attempt. And Taz like, you don't need to grab the leg. You just have to put the weight on the guy. It was just really funny. Um, grab the leg. And the weight really would. You don't really need to. If, you're, if your chest is full chest on chest, you'll get the pin. Um, but I mean, that's amateur wrestling 101, but there's just what I liked. It was almost like a one-upsmanship kind of match, but not with flashy moves, just like I can keep going. Can you keep going? I can keep going. Can you, like they were hitting each other with our moves and and fit, like not quite their finishers, but things that you think would end a match. And it's just, I can keep going. Uh, the cash is a star. He needs to break away from whatever the hell he's doing. Agreed. Yeah, the Don Callis stuff. Has largely, I think, been um, fizzling out anyway, but needs to just be over. But, Joe, I thought we had a hell of a main event. I thought it was a nice way to send off National Joe Day. Uh, so a, a good way to pay tribute to you. Much better than, you know, some other Stop it. It's starting to hurt. That uh, might have occurred. I'm not saying what. I didn't, I didn't call you You're out. You're insinuating. But... I insinuated nothing. Joe, your thoughts on, on the main event? 
it was a gr- a good way to end this dynamite. Um, I thought if people have a hard time of you no know, how kind of like Osprey of like no, they don't sell enough, they might have an issue with this style of match where, like you said, uh, there's so many powerful strikes and moves and things that should end matches, but they don't. There's a lot of near falls. Uh, I, I'm okay with it because I think it helps both. It helps uh, give both wrestlers a little bit more, uh, for lack of better words, credence as far as uh, sure, you know their their ability and their power. Um, I did think about the handshake initially at the beginning and the locking arms. It reminds me of the you no know, music video where the knife fight where they, they lock arms. Oh my gosh! Yeah. And they start dancing around. It's like, <laughs> that's what I, I pictured in my head was that thing from that music video. I love that. Uh, um, other than that, what music like, video is that? Eat it. Oh, was that eat it? Be it. Beat it. Um, I remember that. Yeah, I thought you called the DT and the turnbuckle spot, and I thought Peska's forearm shots. Always looked good, like the one that he laid on to Swerve and Swerve like took it and then knocked him out of the ring. Uh, looked vicious and looked solid. Um, but yeah, right person won. I got to end Joe Day seeing some old Joe on TV. All is well. We did our go home segment was fellow Joe of the of the show. We'll say the fellow Joe of the show because we are Samoa Joe stands. Just giving kind of a classic Joe promo reminding you who the champ is. I love when they do stuff like that because Joe in particular is very good at this style of promo of just a quick um, reminder that he's going to beat your ass and that he's a grown ass adult and he's going to do so. What he's actually, what I think he's also extremely good at, what he did in this promo and watching the match is. Joe as a character can't show fear. That's not who his character is. But he's so clearly angry that Swerve won. Well, you're only angry that a guy won because you don't want to face that guy. And he plays it pretty well where he continues his tough guy speech and he gives that I'm going to kick your ass. But throughout the whole thing, you can tell how furious he is that he has to face Swerve, which means he fears Swerve. And it's such good acting on Joe's part to be able to express that without ever saying it and not being able to overtly show the emotion of fear he has to hide behind his toughness it, it's just it's I agree. amazing i say that about joe a lot that there's so many big guys that are so loud in your face whatever like comes with the territory of being a big guy is like i'm loud and i grunt at you and joe is ice cold so when he deviates from stuff like that like we got tonight at the end of the show uh it's, it's very effective in the way that um he he acts it out so a good note to end on. A solid little dynamite. I don't think it was insane because I think we knew what a lot of the outcomes were, but some really great matches on this. AW kind of back on the heater now. You'd love to see it. We are heading into a fun week next week because we, of course, have Collision. We have Dynamite. We have Rampage. And we have ROH and Supercard of Honor. So big week for AW coming up. Big week for wrestling coming up, obviously. But we will have your Collider cast on Saturday because Collision is back, baby, where it belongs. So we'd love to see that. But before we get out of here, we're going to remind you of a couple of things. We've asked you to leave thumbs up. We've asked you to subscribe. But if you want to throw money at us, there's a great way to do that. And that is with all four t-shirts. Buy all four, okay? Just buy all four. You might get one and be like, oh, my God, this is so great. I want three more. Or you might be like, oh, this is so awesome. I wish it were double-sided. Well, we've got four designs to choose from. I say make like Pokemon and collect them all. And there you go. You've got both variants of the designs in varying sizes and front and back. So head over to Pro Wrestling Tees and support us there. In addition, you can also follow us on Twitter, which Ryan runs. Uh, you can, or X or whatever the hell you want to call it, the Mark Order Podcast. I'll can- give it to you. You can find us on all social media under that handle which ryan sometimes remembers to post on instagram i did today so huh oh good for you you did your job a professional finally he's not the best at production but he does run all of our social media so if you're not an asshole he will interact with you we have a lot of fun 
with the Mark Order podcast Twitter. So head on over there, talk to Ryan, hang out, be nice, don't be weird. It's pretty much the only thing that he asks. But Ryan, what else you got going on? Uh, you like like you said, you can find me on all our socials at Mark Order Pod. Uh, other than that, and I'm, I host the Collider Cast with Joe on Saturday. Then you can follow my history blog here for history.com and on uh, Twitter at underscore here for history. I actually had a new story drop, new article drop today. So something new for you to read. If you do read it, it's on uh, Jesse James, uh, the TV personality, not the outlaw. I don't think people want to read about the outlaw. who was notorious. So that's what I wrote about in a history blog. Definitely did not write about the 19th, the, the 19th century wild west outlaw. I wrote about the TV personality. Absolutely. Yes, definitely go check out that TV personality on a history blog situation. Uh, you can also find that at the top of my Twitter because I just retweeted it. Um, I will also put you over as someone who's frequently on our Fightful Select pre-shows as well. So uh, hop on to FightfulSelect.com for Ryan on pre-show action. I'm sure we'll have you on those at Fightful uh, as we are coming up on a very loaded week. So you can get Ryan with Rob Wilkins and the gang over there. Uh, Joe, first of all, happy National Joe Day. Happy opening day tomorrow. It's a big 24-hour period for our friend Asian Joe. And you're going to want to keep up on all the haps going on with Joe. Where can the people find you? Sure. On social media, at underscore Asian Joe. And then on my bio, I have a link to my serial review blog that I do. So I am, Ryan, still going to work on that list of if rest, if AEW wrestlers were serial. I need to do that homework, but I will I will work on that. It's going to be an extensive project, so you take your time mm-hmm. with that, but it'll be a, a fun read when we Rankings, get there. AEW wrestlers as serial. I mean, it's... Well, it's same amount of time. One rankings uh, content that we could be very excited about, at least with that. But you can catch me at Miss Kate Fave on Fightful Select Mondays through your Sour Graps Raw Review. Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday doing NXT, ROH, and SmackDown. Though WrestleMania week, I will be out for most of the week. So um, there will be substitutes for those post shows. I will be there live. I will also be at Nigel's Magic Show, as we mentioned earlier, so come say hi if you're going to be at that, because I'm so excited about Nigel's Magic Show. I miss Kate Fabe on social media, and also Excite Wrestling Commentary, where all ego Ethan Page is our champion, and I think we're trying to book Sean Ross at versus Matt Cardona, so we will see what happens there. I will be on commentary in mid-April, April 13th and 14th, I believe, are the next upcoming dates, so Stay tuned at Excite Wrestling, twitch.tv slash Excite Wrestling, and Excite Wrestling with an X on social media. Jesse Ozog, if you come to those shows, please say hi. I know I'm running around like a maniac, but I appreciate you being there. Uh, Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We appreciate you tuning in. Goodbye and good night. This concludes the Mark Order Podcast. We now return you to your regularly scheduled programming. Join.